Hi, and welcome to episode 14 of the Yarn Geek Podcast. My name is Denise, and you can find me on Ravelry as Canary Song. Um, and on Instagram, I am Kitty231. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast. Um, we, you can find by looking up uh, Yarn Geek. Um, so I haven't recorded in a while again because, I don't know, just life stuff is getting in the way. Um, I try to record um, from where I was, but it's just where I was before, but it just wasn't possible. Um, and um, I'm actually going to have some, some guests coming uh, tomorrow, so I there won't be any episode next week. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll try to sneak in at least one more episode uh, for this month. But you know how summer is. Sometimes you just have so many stuff going on. Um, that, you know, you just can't get to recording. Um, so thank you so much for all the comments people are, uh, were sending well wishes to Tonka, my cat. Uh, he's doing fine. I'll, I'll do like a full update of like what happened to him, um, since the last time I recorded in case, you know, you don't want to listen to that. You can just stop at that point. Um, but I have been knitting quite a few things, so... You know, I want to sh uh, share that with you. Uh, no finished objects, but I do have a few, like, half-finished objects and some, like, new whips and stuff to show you guys. Uh, so, the first half-finished object is um, my swirly socks, um, who, which is a pattern by the same person that did the Zagular zigzagular socks <laughs> which I knit this year as well um, and I showed it in the previous episode uh, so um, where I was I didn't have a like a, a swift or a ball winder um, and I wanted to cast on a few things and I had already um, hand wound some yarn um, from like Hanks and that took like maybe like over an hour to do and I wanted to cast on more socks and I, you know, I have some nitpicks with me. So I went with that because, you know, it's already in a ball. Um, so this is, uh, the yarn is Knit Picks Felici in the Countess colorway. Um, and I purchased this yarn um, back during like their Black Friday sale. Um, and I, I have like two more <laughs> of, of Felici yarn from that. That I purchased that I still need to knit. Um, so yeah, I found I found this pattern on Ravelry. It's free and it's it's you know ideally made for self striping yarn. You know, it adds some sort of you know interesting texture. It's pretty much just knitting and purling, and you get this like swirl design. Um, and I did an afterthaw heel, which is what I normally do for self striping because I don't want to. Um, break up the striping um, so as I I cast this on I noticed that you know this when I was knitting the the cuff it seemed like it was the same color um, and you know Felici is normally a six um, six color striping and so like I was knitting down here and then I noticed it looks better in the the video than in person but I noticed that, you know, these are two separate colors, but just one of them looks like it was like barely dyed. And then it like it like it was missing the dye. And so I was wondering, I was like, is that a mistake or did they intentionally do that? And then I was just like looking on Instagram, you know, I looked up Knit Picks for Lychee and I saw somebody somebody else's socks that they knit and it, there's these two colors were definitely different. So I, I got like some weird um, weird dye lot and it looks like it hasn't it wasn't properly dyed all the way which is like you know pretty looks a little di disappointing um, because when you see it over here you know it looks like it's one color when it's not supposed to be um, so yeah and I already cast on the second pair and it's the same thing um, and I put the afterthought heel in already and in my first pair I completely forgot that, you know, once you get to the leg, um, that you're not supposed to knit the pattern on the bottom half, um, 
because then it's going to be uncomfortable on when you have a, you know, in the shoe. And I was knitting the pattern, so I had to like rip back and um, then knit plain. And then I started doing it again with this, um, this one as well. And I don't know what was <laughs> what was I thinking. Um, and I have I didn't make a little some mistakes over here, but it's fine. Um, I'm knitting these using um, tragus in the US one size. I I. I seem to be like missing a bunch of like my US1 needles. I don't know. I have a, a pair of knit picks and I can't find them. And you know, um, my carbons broke and I still need to get those exchanged. And so I really only have like one, uh, one, one uh, magic loop needle to knit socks with right at the moment. You know, that's you. That's size one. So I I really like the the chargus that I'm using. Uh, that I've used to knit shawls before and that was the only pair I had so I decided you know I wanted to try out the the, the US size one and this is the lace um, needle and I, you know I really love these uh, these needles I think they, they might be my favorite um, needles right now um, you know it's just really smooth to knit with um, and yeah I like it a lot so yeah I'm, I started the second one and I'm also knitting another pair of socks that I started at the same time. You know, I don't usually have two socks going at the same time, but I just felt like I needed a change. And since I was knitting those, like, those monkey socks that took me, like, a month to do, um, you know, I was losing my s sock knitting module and I wanted to get it back. So I felt like if I cast on two, two pairs of socks that are, like, relatively easy knits that, it, you know... It would make me want to knit socks again, and that definitely worked. So the second um, sock I'm working on is uh, Vanilla Latte Socks. And this is a really popular pattern on Ravelry. I always see it, like, on the top of when you do, you know, looking for sock patterns. And I knit 2x2 um, two two cuff for, like, 15 rounds, I think. And this is really simple. It's just knitting... You knit six, and then you knit, you purl two in one row, and the next row is just all knitting. Um, so it's pretty, pretty basic, and this is also a free pattern. And I like in the pattern that it gives you options of different um, heels to try, so like stockinette and um, eye of partridge. Um, but I didn't do any of those. I uh, decided to do a short row heel because I've only ever knit a short roll one pair of socks that are short roll heels um so yeah I got this one going and I I found this pattern I just googled short roll heels and I found it on some blog which I will put in the show notes um and I, this short roll heel is a wrap and turn um I know a lot of people don't like to do those but I don't know I felt pretty easy to me the problem was that, uh, you know, once you knit the heel, you have to join it back to the, you know, the, the other half of your sock. And I had giant holes here, which I already went back afterwards and um, fixed. So I don't know how, what I did wrong. Um, it tells you in the instructions how to prevent that, but um, I, I guess I, I made a mistake. Um, one of them is um had a bigger hole than the other one so i don't know what i did wrong um you're gonna have to like do more research about short row heel because i it definitely is faster than a traditional heel and i can see why people like to do it um it doesn't it's not as time consuming and so then i just knit the the leg and uh i did my standard i think i do it the standard square toe and this yarn is a destination yarn in the International Space Station colorway. And this is an indie dyer from um, Cleveland, who I met um, when I went to Ohio a few months ago. And I purchased the yarn from her. So here's my, the second pair going. And I'm using my higher, higher sharps. Um, and these are ready for the 
the heel but I <laughs> I I knit this and then I stopped and I and then I started this other sock um and I just like haven't been feeling like I want to knit the heel on this but I have to do it um so yeah I, I hand wound this skein and it took me forever and um like I had like a tangle in it so I had to um cut a section out of it and then so now I have like two two balls um to knit from so here's the other one um I'm probably gonna have a lot left over it seems like um so there's that and um I have worked on my cozy memories blanket the last time I was working on this um green not green yellow square <laughs> which I finished and then so I, I got like some like a little green section here going on so this is all uh, yarn that I dyed myself that I was just like experimenting on um, and I really like this square it's it's um pinks and greens which I, I never really thought would go together but I really like how it looks and I actually have another little mini skein that's like very similar to this and I had uh, cast it on and I, I liked it so much it also has like some browns in it and I, I just like the combination so much that I I ripped it out because I don't remember what I did <laughs> it was just like one of those mini skeins that I just like threw in the pot and then I was just like just throwing whatever in it and now I feel like like damn I really should have like taken taken some notes because I really like it so um I'm just I just ripped it out and now I'm just gonna like try to study the skein and see what I did you know like lay it out and like look at the colors maybe I can recreate it or maybe it'd be a variation of it um, we don't know I don't know uh, so yeah I got another row done right now I'm at uh, 45 squares so there you go um I actually stopped knitting on it because I heard that there was gonna um there's gonna be a, another knit along for another blanket knit along coming up that's co-hosted um by Mina of the Knitting Ice Pad podcast and Sharon of the Sox Cetera podcast they're doing the summer summer blanket blitz um and that's running until I think the end of August. So I like took after finish this row, I took a break, and now I'm gonna start back up, you know, to be part of that knit along. And I still have a lot of that, um, a lot of that yarn that I that I have that when I did my mini skein dyeing. I think I have like probably like 15 skeins left or more of that. So I want to add all those first. Um, before I add anything, you know, anybody else's yarn in here, I want to have like a section that's just, that's just like, you know, my yarn, I guess. Um, so yeah, there's that. And, um, my, my last whip is my, um, my Reina shawl. So I, I'm taking part in another little long, another knit along slash dye along for, um, Laura from the Dyer's Notebook. Um, so it's based around fantasy or fairy tale characters and you have to use the inspiration to um, dye your own your own yarn and then knit any pattern that you want um, so that, you know that I showed you guys last time this is it was like in a hank this is my um, yarn that I dyed that is inspired by um, Melisandre from Game of Thrones who is also, some people call her like the red woman and she's always wearing red and has like red hair. So um, I just took her as an inspiration and you know, I dyed this red and I really like it. Um, so I'm doing the um, the Reina shawl, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's like really, it's a really popular pattern. So it's, um, it's a triangle shawl and it's uh, like garter and then like this mesh panel alternating, you know, it gets bigger and bigger and it's, a, it's like a one skein project. Oh, can you 
go. I haven't worked on it in a week or so. I need to get back to it. Um, I got distracted by the socks. And I'm using my Chagos size, what size are these? Six. Um, in the pattern, I said to use a size four, but I could not find my size four. I have like an interchangeable, interchangeable set from their picks. And I don't know where the size 4 is. I think it's somewhere, probably in some project bag that I forgot about. Um, I couldn't find it. And then I, I couldn't find my size 5s either. So I was like, uh, I'll just go with a 6. Um, you know, it's, it's a shawl. So you don't really have to worry about the gauge or any of that. And this is a really good pattern because you can just keep going. You know, knitting until you run out. You know, just keep alternating. Um... The little patterns and I like in this pattern it's 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 a, it's only a one page pattern um, and I really like it because it comes with at the end the author uh, I apologize that I'm really bad with remembering you know designer names but I put them on the bottom so you can see it there you know so they get their credit I like that um, she put like this row counter so see how much I'm almost more than halfway done um, and now I have to do like a bunch a whole mesh section and, and then another garter section and then I'm ready to you know bind off um, so yeah, this can be a really nice shawl I did make a mistake right here I don't know if you see that it's like slightly bigger than the rest of the mesh section I don't know what I did um, but hopefully when I block it out, it's you know, it won't tell. It won't, it won't be that noticeable. Um, so yeah, I really like this yarn. And I'm, maybe at some point I'm going to knit some socks out of there. I know that there's the Melisandre sock pattern, which I was thinking about knitting. But I it's a toe-up pattern, and I don't have that much experience with toe-up socks. And um, it also has like a, you know, it's charted and... I tend to stay away from charts when I'm knitting socks. I don't know why. Um, so that's why I didn't cast those on. But I think this would look really nice in that pattern. It has like like a little flame motif, I think. Um, so yeah, I think this yarn would, look, would go really well with that pattern. Um, so yeah, that's all the my whips. I do have some acquisitions. Uh, the first thing I managed to score um, a sock blank from Andre Sue Knits. So here's our tag. If you follow her on Instagram, she's been like knitting or watch her podcast. She's been knitting a, um, not knitting, dyeing a bunch of sock blanks, and I managed to catch one of her updates. Um, so here is the one I got and this is really beautiful like I don't even want to knit with this <laughs> I just kind of like want to stare at it so I was like oh you know I should it's like you can just have this as a scarf it's really pretty but I do want to knit with this eventually so um I, I've never knit with a sock blank before but I heard that you know a lot of times you don't end up using all of it so if I get like one little section left like this I'd be really happy at least like you know I can have that to look at once I knit my socks <laughs> um but I, I will cast these I, I think I will cast this on soon once I get those other two socks off the needles um so yeah if you haven't checked out her shop it's on Etsy and if you're uh, lucky enough to catch one of her updates, she's she's been um, posting a lot of beautiful sock blanks, um, and I kind of want more, but <laughs> I'm trying to stop myself, you know, and let other people enjoy it as well, you know, just like hoard all the yarn. Um, and there's another indie dyer that I I managed to catch her updates. I'm pretty bad with. Um, catching people's updates, I'm usually getting like cart jacked from Etsy. Every time I try to buy something, it's like you know gone in like two seconds, and like, and I'm always disappointed. So, you know, lately I've been good at catching updates, so I've been happy. Um, this is this cat sandwich fibers. I really love her logo. It's 
the little cat sandwich. And uh, this is her that pool boy colorway. And I saw I saw this and I was like, yeah, I need to have this. This is so summery colors. Um, and this is a seventy five percent merino and twenty percent nylon uh, for sixty three yards. So yeah, this is really pretty. Um, and then I was like looking at my sock yarn and like everything. I don't have any, almost no solid color um, yarn because I was I was thinking about casting on this um, this new pattern I found, but they recommended that it was a solid color, and I have almost no, no solid color yarn because you know a lot of indie dyers like you know I want to knit. I want to buy their yarn, but usually, you know, I want to go for the variegated yarn because it's more unique. So um, I'm probably gonna have to buy some like cheap, solid color yarn. <laughs> um, and the third thing I I picked up recently is another yarn from Destination Yarn, and this is her the uh, the wall colorway, which is um, inspired by Game of Thrones. Um, if you know that. Um, there's an area that has it's called the wall um, so yeah these co these colors are inspired by that and this was a limited color colorway she did she did like four different colors that were um, inspired by Game of Thrones so she had the wall uh, Iron Islands and um, Red Keep and Winterfell I managed to get three out of the four. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't get it the first time around, but she had recently dyed up this um, yarn again because of the season finale, and uh, so I had to jump on the chance because this is a you know limited limited um, quantities. She doesn't regularly dye this, so I was like, it's now or never. So <laughs> I managed to catch, you know, managed to snag this one. It's really pretty, pretty. I don't know how to talk. <laughs> um, yeah, Lucy's around somewhere. I don't know where she is. She was like all about me a second ago. And then once I started recording, she like ran off. So no Lucy this episode. Um, so just an update on, on Tonka. He's doing very well. Uh, after I posted my last episode... He was doing fine and then all of a sudden he just started getting sick again like he was hiding um, and not wanting to deal with anybody usually when a cat is hiding that that's not a good sign usually it's when they're sick so we took him back and he had to do all these tests and um, just to make sure that he didn't have any more stones or that it came back um, but he doesn't have it, it, it I think we think it was the antibiotic so I had to we had to change the antibiotics and I had to like give him a whole a whole course of antibiotics so this poor cat was like on medicine for like two weeks um and then finally he got off of that and he had his stitches removed and he had to wear his e-collar uh, longer than they recommended because um he kept trying to you know pick at it and we just wanted it to heal so he had to wear the e-collar longer than normal so this poor cat has been through like a lot and finally got his his new food that he has to be on for the rest of his life so um hopefully he won't have anything like this again you know crossing fingers so yeah it's a whole ordeal with him but hopefully he's you know he's doing much better now and he's happy um so yeah there won't be a new episode next week um, and I'll try to post another episode before the end of the month so um, you know like always I leave all my put all my show notes on the Ravelry group if you want to comment on there or if you have any questions for me um, you know you can go there or you can leave a comment below or look for me on Instagram I'm always like posting there almost every day so yeah I'll catch you guys later